Yo, what's up guys, it's DJ Rick Webb. Welcome back to the channel. And as the title says, today is a gig log, but it is also a little bit of a tutorial. So as you guys have seen in our past gig logs recently, we've been offering live streaming for our ceremonies. So I'm gonna show you two ways that you can live stream a ceremony very easily and overall how I actually do it in terms of a sales process as well. First off, before we get into the gig log, if you do want to skip ahead to the gig log, the timestamp is right there for that gig log. But I tried filming this day of the explain how I live streamed the ceremony and the plan was to walk you through it when I got to the actual wedding, but internet was not working out at this wedding. The internet was just non-existent between cell phone and Wi-Fi. Just internet was very hard to come by. And this brings me to my first topic that I want to make and this is like a business sales advice for all of you guys out there that are looking at offering this live streaming like a wedding ceremony during this whole COVID, uh, getting out of COVID, starting back to events and getting back to reality thing. First off, as we all know, the reason for this service is to provide a way for our couples to share their wedding ceremony with those guests that cannot actually make it physically to their wedding for whatever reason that may be. Now the second point I want to address is that everyone is considering live streaming. Like the first thought is I want to live stream this with all of my guests. That's great in theory, but let's think about practicality right here. I'm not sure about all you guys, but a large majority of my venues are out at these very isolated barn type outdoor uh, pavilion style venues, which have very limited internet access. So in reality, I cannot 100% guarantee for every one of my couples that I'm going to have absolutely 100% reliable, perfect live stream at their wedding. And for that reason, I do not sell live streaming with my company Fusion Sound and Lighting. We sell a ceremony recording package, and that is nothing fancy. I take my Canon G7X Mark III, or you could even use your cell phone camera. I record the whole entire ceremony via video, and I also use some sort of recording device to record the audio from the microphones that we're using at the ceremony. I have an overkill Zoom H6 right here. There are a lot of cheaper options. I'll link them down in the description down below that you could get as well to do this sort of thing. Then the day after the wedding, I take the video clip and the audio clip and I go into a very basic video editing software. I use Cyberlink PowerDirector, but you could use iMovie, you could use Windows Movie Maker, and I sync the video to the audio, I publish it, and then I post it onto our Fusion Sound and Lighting YouTube page and share it with a couple. That is what I sell and that is what I guarantee. But as you guys know, everyone wants to know how to live stream and all the couples want to live stream it. They want to share it live with their family and friends. So what I do is I sell them the ceremony recording package as the guaranteed thing. You are guaranteed you're going to get this. And as a bonus, we will live stream the ceremony if internet is available and works out in our favor. And this is where we get into the tutorial part on how you can live stream a wedding ceremony for your clients. I'm gonna show you the very overkill way that I do it sometimes and also the very simple way that you can do it with your phone. First thing we gotta talk about when it comes to live streaming a ceremony is actually not the gear. It's where you're gonna actually live stream the ceremony at on the internet so people can view it. Now as you guys know through the whole pandemic season I've been doing a lot of live stream DJing on YouTube on this YouTube channel. We have also as a company now live streamed four total wedding ceremonies with a lot more lined up here in the future. And I've also been providing a lot of live streaming logistics for a lot of side companies doing little side events for colleges, etc. And throughout all of that live streaming, I've tried a variety of different sources. Zoom, YouTube, Google Hangouts, Facebook. And I can 100% say that the best option that I have found to do live streaming for ceremonies or for any event in general is YouTube. And quickly, I wanna talk about why that is. Zoom is overall a great option. A lot of people are using Zoom and it's nice because everyone can have their own little window and you can see everyone on there. I guess in that sense, it is great. It also has a lot of tools that you can use to mute people and stuff, but 
Zoom costs money. So that right there is drawback number one. Secondly, Zoom does not have the best audio quality out of all of the streaming platforms out there. Zoom audio quality is not the greatest. And third, people have to install the software, the Zoom software, to be able to join the Zoom call. And that third reason right there is the main reason why Zoom is not the best option. This may or may have not clicked for you, but think about the guests that cannot actually make it to the wedding ceremony. Most of them are older people, like the bride and groom's grandparents, great-grandparents, just older people in general. They're the ones that are more susceptible to the virus and are less likely to be in attendance. They tend to be less tech savvy. Therefore, having to provide extra steps for them to actually be able to view the live stream leads to be a problem in offering live streaming as a option. So for live streaming ceremonies, you need to have the easiest way possible to be able to stream it and make it easy for people to actually access the stream. The other two options I mentioned, Facebook and Google Hangouts are a same sort of thing. Facebook, you have to log into Facebook and then eventually find the stream. It might be in a group, you don't know. There's a lot of extra steps to be able to get to the live stream. Same thing with kind of Google Hangouts. If you go to join a Google Hangout call, you have to like approve the mic and click in and there's, there's extra steps. With a YouTube unlisted live stream, it is as simple as clicking a link and it opens up on any device any browser, very easy, very simple. And for that reason alone, that is why YouTube has been my go-to to do these live streams. And I'll get into how I actually share the unlisted live stream with the guests that are going to be attending here in a second, but let's dive into how you actually create a YouTube unlisted private live stream. So I'm logged into the Fusion Sound and Lighting YouTube channel, and it's as simple as going to the Create up here and go to Go Live. Now, like I mentioned, there are two different ways that I do live streaming. There's a complete overkill way of doing it, and then there's a very simple way with your cell phone in doing it. And before I move on into showing you how to create an unlisted live stream, I need to address the fact that between these two options, the simple cell phone and the overkill way of doing it, there is one big difference. If you go the simple route, you cannot share the link for the live stream until the day of. With the overkill route, you can share the link for the live stream as early as you possibly want to do it. And for that reason alone, I've been going the more overkill route for our weddings, so that way we have a link ahead of time. But I always have this as a backup, as you'll see in the gig log later on, I had to go this route because of very, very limited internet availability. You need a lot more internet to be able to do the overkill route, than to do the very simple route. But either way, I'm gonna tell you how you basically communicate this to your couples and how you are able to get the guests to view the live stream. So first off, let me show you how we do the overkill route and how we create a unlisted YouTube live stream. So when you click the go live, it typically takes you to this screen right here to start a live stream. You don't wanna do that. We wanna create a future live stream. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna go down here to manage. And as you guys can see right here in the manage, I already have a upcoming live stream in November that I've already created in here. And the reason for that is because the couple wanted to have the link prior so they could put it on their little invitations that they're sending out to their guests, just their little uh, reminders to save the dates or whatever they're sending out as an option for them to join the live stream later on. But I do have another method that we will be using to communicate with those people future down the line as well. But to schedule a stream, it's as simple as clicking schedule stream. Then you will give a title to this. So this is going to be ceremony demo. Uh, and the biggest thing here is right here. You want to have this as unlisted. So in YouTube, you can have uh, live streams and videos as either public, unlisted, or private. Private is for you only, so that's not gonna work for our case. Unlisted is what we need because anyone with a link can view it, but it is not public on your YouTube channel, and anyone subscribed to your YouTube channel will not actually see the stream. I've actually done unlisted live streams on this YouTube channel for companies you guys never saw them because it was unlisted. And then obviously you can set the date and the time. I'm gonna set this for tomorrow or Tuesday, or whatever. You can upload a custom thumbnail. I like to find a uh, picture of the venue or a picture of the ceremony site that they're gonna be at and put it as the thumbnail. 
Um, and then no, it's not made for kids and you click create stream. Awesome. So our stream is created and if I click in on it right here, we can see all of the information that we're going to need to set up the live stream in the overcomplicated way. So first off, how do you get the link and how do you share it with your clients? So you're going to go up here to the upper right and go to the share right here. And right there is the link that you can copy, you can paste into a browser, you can send that to your couples, you can put it into an email chain, you can post it in a Facebook group. There's lots of methods that you can do to communicate this link and share it. I like to pitch to all my couples to create a Facebook group for all the people that they want to join in on it. We put the link in there, I can post multiple times leading up to the ceremony as reminders. I also like to have my couples collect emails so that I can send out email blasts with the link for the live stream. That is also a route for the live stream, the simple method right there. If you get an email list of all the emails, you can basically send all of the guests a prior email the day before that's like, hey, this is Rick at Fusion Sound Lighting. I'm going to be sending out the email blast that's going to have a link to view the live stream tomorrow. So make sure you bookmark or you mark my uh, email as being important. It's not spam, etc. Something like that. And then day of, um, when you go to create the stream, I'll show you that here in a second. You paste that link into an email chain or an email blast and you send it out to everyone and everyone can join into the live stream that way. Now, I'm not going to go into detail on how you set up the actual live stream in OBS. I highly recommend you go check out my video on how to live stream uh, with OBS using all the devices that I'm going to have on the table right here. I made a whole, a whole video on how you do this in OBS. Uh, which is my streaming software of choice. So go check out that video. If you guys want more details, let me know and I can go into that as well. But to do that, basically you're gonna use the stream key down here. You copy, you paste this into your streaming software like OBS and that is how you're going to stream. Basically in OBS where you set up your camera and you configure your audio and all that, you're gonna click stream and then in YouTube it's going to pop up with the go live up here in the upper right. It'll turn blue and basically be like, hey, we're receiving signal from OBS and then you can click go live and go live. But I highly recommend you guys to check out my video on how to live stream. I did it for DJing, but the same principles apply for the cameras and the audio setup. So it's very simple and I made a whole walkthrough and I don't want to make this video too long. So go check out this video. If you guys got more questions, let me know and I can make a whole video on how to set up your cameras and your audio in OBS to do a ceremony, in specifically a ceremony. Now that is how you set up a unlisted live stream inside of YouTube so that you can stream it unlisted to just the people that have a link for the overcomplicated method like I mentioned. Let me quickly show you guys what tools of the trade I'm using for that kind of overcomplicated or that overkill method of live streaming a ceremony to YouTube. I'll quickly show you what I'm using and then I am going to show you the very simple method to do it on a cell phone, which I think is gonna be a lot more appealing to everyone out there because it's super simple to do. And like I mentioned, we don't wanna be offering live streaming as an actual sale thing because you cannot guarantee that your live stream is going to go perfect because internet is not 100% reliable. And I don't know about you guys, but I would definitely not be wanting to refund a couple the day after the wedding because the live stream crashed, the internet went down, there was no internet, and they paid for a live stream and they didn't get a live stream. That's why, like I said, I do the recording method because I can 100% guarantee that I'm gonna have a recording. I cannot 100% guarantee that my internet's gonna work and I can live stream. So, in the overkill method, first thing you need is a laptop of some sort to run a streaming software. I use OBS, I have a full tutorial on how you do it in OBS. Ecamm is great for Macs. I believe you can also run OBS on Macs as well. I I have a whole video on how you set up OBS. Like I said, it's linked in the description down below, so I'm not gonna go to it in this video. For all of the recording things, so I first off have this awesome little Anchor USB thing. It's got three USBs, and it's got an ethernet jack on the other end. So this is just a USB hub, but the big thing is it has an ethernet jack right here. Like I mentioned, internet is the most important thing when it comes to live streaming. So if I have the availability to connect to a hardwired internet option at a venue, I'm gonna do it. And most laptops don't have a ethernet or a cat six, cat five connection available. So I bring this device right here and it also gives me more USB inputs for our variety of sources. On that note, I also always bring a 100 foot cat six ethernet cable. Like I mentioned, I love hardwired internet connections and if I can get one at the venue, I'm gonna get one. Now starting off with the video side, 
I use a Canon G7X Mark III, and I use the HDMI out via the little micro HDMI cable right here to run into my Elgato HD60S. So this goes in right here, the HDMI feeds in on this side, and this goes to USB and feeds into OBS so I have video. And the nice part about doing the HDMI out, I can actually record with this camera and do HDMI out at the same time. So that way I can record the ceremony for my recording package, what I guarantee I can get the recording and at the same time I can be feeding the same HDMI out into my live streaming software. Now on the audio side, like I mentioned, we do overkill. I have a Zoom H6. So this right here is what we use to record all the audio. I have this handy dandy little XLR to RCA cable. So we plug this into our audio mixer for the ceremony, which is typically the Yamaha MG06. So I take the main outs from that, from the mixer, and I run them into the XLR connections on the Zoom H6. There's also a smaller version of this as well. I believe it's the Zoom H4. It only has two XLR inputs, so there are definitely cheaper options than this bad boy right here. So like I mentioned, we hard record on this. It's got an SD card inside that it actually records the audio file too. And then we use a aux cable and we come out of the line output right here on the front. And I run that line output into the in on the Elgato. So there's an input right here for a uh, aux line in. So the audio feeds out of here into the Elgato and then basically everything, video and audio feeds in from the Elgato into our OBS panel. And that in a simple nutshell is basically how I do the overkill complicated way of live streaming a ceremony. Like I mentioned, check out my video on how to set up OBS to do streaming. It goes into a lot more detail on the setups in OBS to add video sources, to add audio sources, so that you can actually hook all this up and make it work. All right, so let me show you guys the simpler method on your cell phone of how to do a YouTube live stream, and I'll explain how you share that with your couples, as this is the simpler way to do it, and this is the way that I prefer to do it if the couples are cool with it. Um, I've done it for two of the last four weddings and mostly, like I said, it comes down to if the couple is cool with not having a link ahead of time and I've actually come up with some loopholes of how to get around it to start with, this is the method I prefer. So it's very simple and let me show you guys on my phone right here. All right, so in YouTube, the first thing you're gonna wanna do is click the little plus sign up here and you're gonna wanna click the live button. Now you're gonna wanna do this at the actual event because the first thing it's gonna ask you to do is the like smile for a thumbnail. So this is another test stream. And obviously just like on the desktop, we want this to be an unlisted stream and audience blah, 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 click next. Oh, you wanna, you gotta select that it's not for kids. Uh, YouTube cares about that, click next. The first thing it's gonna ask is it's gonna basically be like, yo, smile for a thumbnail. Um, you can turn the camera around. So there is the thumbnail, you can edit it, you can create a new thumbnail, you can take a picture of basically the ceremony site, that's what I do. And then you click the go live button and you, you are live, you are live. You're 100% live right now in the unlisted format because someone has to have the link to be able to see this. The question is, how do you share the link? Well, you actually have to have some sort of internet to some degree. So the beauty of doing this is it's a direct stream off of your mobile device. It doesn't take as much internet power as the overkill method, but you do have to have internet on a side laptop so that you can go to your YouTube channel where you can access the live stream that's going on and you can copy the link to share it. So that is the method that you do. So on your laptop, what you're gonna wanna do is log into your same YouTube account that you are currently live streaming on your phone and you're gonna to wanna to go to videos, live, and then under live, you're gonna see live now, which is your current stream from your phone. You can see the awesome thumbnail shot I took of my face. And what you're gonna to wanna to do is go over here to options, and you're gonna to wanna to click get shareable link. And it automatically copies it to your clipboard. And now you can take that YouTube link right there, you can open up Facebook, paste it into the Facebook group that all of the guests are in, paste that in there. Or my preferred method is to have an email list and send an email blast to all of the participants that link. And that right there is a lot simpler than this overcomplicated method. So once again, I wanna quickly recap and explain to you guys the very, very simple method of how you do live streaming on your phone at a wedding ceremony. I don't wanna overlook though that I did say from the get-go, 
I never sell this as guaranteed. This is a bonus. I guarantee a ceremony recording with audio. That is what I guarantee because that's what I can guarantee. We all know that internet quality is never the greatest. So to do the simple method, here's what you need to do and here's how you need to communicate it to your couple. One, explain to them that you have the guaranteed recording that they're going to get guaranteed. Secondly, explain to them the YouTube live stream that you're going to do. So explain to them the simplicity of all it is is click a link. They open it up on YouTube and they can watch it. There's a chat where they can chat with all their friends and family, but it is the simplest method because all they have to do is click a link. There's no additional software they need to install. It's very, very simple. Secondly, if you want to do this very simple method, like I said, you don't have a link that you can share prior to the wedding. So what you want to explain to your couples is we're going to do two things or we can just do one thing, but basically we're going to do two different things. One, I'm going to need to have a list of everyone's email address. So basically have the couple collect the list of email address. You can set up basically your email and tell them to email you. You can create a Google form. That's a great, great method to use. Um, so create a Google form where basically couples can share the link to the Google form and on the Google form you just have name, email address name, email address, so basically everyone can basically sign up to be able to see the stream. Then you can also create a Facebook group. So create a Facebook group, have all the people that they want to join the live stream join into the Facebook group. And then, like I said, day of at the ceremony, so maybe like an hour before prelude, 30 minutes before prelude maybe, if you're wanting to do a little crunch time basically, go ahead, start your YouTube live stream on your phone. Make sure you got it plugged into power because uh, this will use a lot of battery. You can do it over cell phone internet, which is great, uh, especially in these remote weddings. That's why I've used it at two of our weddings. But start the stream, then you're gonna wanna have internet on your laptop, either from a hotspot on your phone or your assistant's phone or use the Wi-Fi at the venue. Uh, if you have Wi-Fi, I highly recommend using it. But go on YouTube, get the link, and then what you're gonna wanna do is go into Gmail, or if you have like a CRM software, you can use that as well. Go into your email account, and what you're gonna wanna do is create a new email and paste all of the email addresses that you have into BCC, blind carbon copy. So basically when you send that out, it goes to each individual email address. It doesn't send it as one mass email. It doesn't let people see all the other email addresses. It's the best way to do it. So basically paste all the email addresses into the BCC field. So paste them all in there and then basically be like, hey, live stream's going live, paste the link right there. And as a bonus, I always like to send that email out the day before, um, just as a courtesy email like, hey, this is Rick from Fusion Sound and Lighting. I'm gonna be sending out the live stream link tomorrow around this time so that they know when to expect to have that live stream link. So that is kind of how I do it. Also on Facebook, go on your Facebook group, do the same sort of thing. Hey, I'm gonna be sharing the link tomorrow at this time um, and then paste in the link when you have it from the stream that's live. And that overall is basically how I do the simple method of live streaming at ceremonies. All right guys, that was my best attempt at explaining how I do live streaming at ceremonies as well as tips and tricks on how to do this as a business strategy. Uh, so you don't get screwed over and offer a live stream and then get screwed over because the live stream didn't work. Um, so that's what I'm doing at Fusion Sound and Lighting, but I did go through a lot of stuff and I did do it very quickly and sometimes I overlook things that you guys don't understand or don't know about. So if you have any comments, questions, or concerns, or things that I need to go into more detail, please leave them down in the comments section down below and I will probably make a follow-up video uh, diving further into detail. But on that note, let's get on with the gig log after going through this long ass tutorial. Welcome to Sarandi Lake Estates. Drake and Kaylin just went to go get something to eat because they haven't ate lunch because they're idiots. I don't know why they didn't eat lunch. Anyway, Serenity, that's where the ceremony's gonna happen down there. There's a clubhouse over here and you can just barely and I say barely pick up a Wi-Fi signal from it. Not entirely sure how well that's gonna work out. Anyways, I'm going on a little walk here up to where the reception site is because I need to use the bathroom. So here's where the reception slash cocktail is gonna take place. This is the dance floor area above some string bulb lighting. There's up lighting actually in the inside there too. All right, it's hot out here guys, but I'm gonna walk you through the live streaming because I don't know how well or if it's even gonna work because the internet is not great. Like I mentioned, I don't promise them that we're gonna be able to live stream it, so. You know, tough things happen sometimes. All right, so little update here. Internet is not going good enough to actually stream to YouTube, although I have enough signal to be able to do like a live on my phone. 
um, which kind of sucks because I can't send out the pre-link, but uh, basically my phone is over there streaming on YouTube, which is like a, the most raw form. It's really low quality, but it works. Mm -hmm. We're recording back here for the recording, so uh, they're watching it though on the really, it's really low res, but it works. We're here today to celebrate the relationship of Jessica and Corbin and to be supporters of the commitment they share with one another. Your wedding ring is a symbol of your promise to one another. The ring, an unbroken, never-ending circle, is a symbol of committed, unending love. Corbin, as you place this ring on Jessica's finger, repeat these words after me. I give you this ring. I give you this ring. As a symbol of my love. As a symbol of my love. For today. For today. And all the days to come. And all the days to come. By the power vested in me, by the state of North Carolina, I now pronounce you man and wife. guys sometimes the kiss approach just works better so ceremony is over and uh, I was rushing there a little bit so I didn't get a chance to film but we ended up not using the OBS route because internet sucks we all three have different carriers and all three of us couldn't get more than like half LTE signal like three four bars so we couldn't get a good signal there we can kind of get Wi-Fi from the house there but it was worse than our cell phone signal and it just was not working to do the OBS route but I was able to use my phone and just do a direct live stream from my phone on uh, YouTube so you can click go live on YouTube and just start a, a live stream but the problem with that is you can't share the link before you start which is what we already did so basically I had to do that and with the barely like low quality internet I could get off the Wi-Fi I used my laptop to send out a new email blast with the new link and also shared it on Facebook and all that and posted on the current link so that everyone could view it but Basically, we streamed it from my phone. It was kind of blurry, really low quality, but it worked, it got the job done. But like I said, that's not what they're paying for. They're paying for the HD recording that I'm going to create for them tomorrow. So the camera's recorded some great uh, video clips and the audio is recorded on the Zoom H6. So I'm gonna sync that tomorrow, send them that. But go tear this down and then I'll go show you guys what we got for the reception slash cocktail. It's actually kind of cool. We got 16 up lights up there, like lighting up some trees and stuff. It's really cool. It's actually like in the woods, like it's a barn in the woods. It's really cool looking, so we'll show you guys some clips of that soon. Ooh. That's a nice truck. If you want to learn more about everything I did to it, you should check out my, my YouTube channel, Taco Rick. So behind me is where the reception is taking place right now. They actually got like a porter cool unit over here to blow like cold air and stuff. Kind of cool. Setup is very similar from last week. Two JBL SRX 815Ps. One's pointing into there. Rockville hydraulic stands. We got the on-stage black scrim. ADJ event table, two of the custom sign. Rain 12, mix our duo. Sound switch with the launch pad, right? So it's yep. called launch pad X. Serato. Windows computer. Then back here we have the ultimate ceremony rack which is being used as the wireless mics for tonight So basically we're running two wireless mics that he's got set up up there We got our sanitization for COVID and down here there are top our two row cases for our up lights right here We are using 16 Chinese up lights scattered around the venue like there's one right there You'll see them come to life later on tonight. You want to tell anybody? Say what up. Um, it's a hot one today, you know, but we're gonna be out here enjoying this wedding because we haven't been gigging for a couple months so it's fun regardless. These are gonna look sweet later on tonight. There's a lot of them, 16 of them around this property. So let's get this started. Up first, we have the grandparents of the groom Linda and Joe. Give it up for Gabby and Gary. Let's hear some noise for Rifa and Michael. Let's make a lot of noise for you. Make sure you honor Samantha and your best man, Patrick. Mr. and Mrs. Williams. Thank 
Update, I'm chilling down here by the fire pit and um, everything's going on up there. We've been through dinner, dinner was awesome. The caterer had some barbecue that was smacking. Marcellus and Drake been doing their thing. My legs hurt. If anyone is wondering why I'm out here, it's because I have nothing better to do. And as the owner of the company, why not come out and check out what my events are and just chill and be in the background and kind of watch what a, a wedding party is. And it's always good to observe other DJs and learn from other DJs. Uh, a lot of beginners don't realize that, but if you're a beginner DJ out there, like literally reach out. I think he's moving into some dances. But anyways, on my tip, reach out to other DJs in your area, especially if you're a beginner, and just see if they'll let you come out and shadow them. And if they won't, they're they're and I would not talk to those DJs. Um, they see you as a threat for some reason. We're all we're all in this together. I'm gonna go film though these these dances. This is a super dope venue to say the least. Just looking up here, cool setup. The dance floor is now open, so let's have a good time. Alright, I'm turning this gig log into like a tip session for beginners. Because uh, I'm watching Marcellus do exactly what I would be doing right now, which is trying out every genre you can think of to see what sticks. Because this crowd is really hard to read. All right, so let me let me just put you in the world of a DJ right now at a mobile event, what he just did. So he started out with the bride and groom song that they wanted to open up the dance floor with, which didn't really work out too well. So then he hit him with some hip hop to see what the reaction was. He got a couple younger people up there, but then it didn't stick. Then he went to some country. He got a little bit of people out there and he noticed that basically he got some younger people up there and he's looking around and like the people that are standing around the dance floor kind of like waiting to join in was on the older side. So hit him with an old school song real quick. Classic music programming. Analyzing a crowd, crowd reading basically as a DJ is the number one most important skill to develop as a DJ, especially in the mobile industry. And it is a, it, it, it takes time. It's something that like you learn over time to basically analyze a crowd and you learn what people will dance to. I know every DJ out there wants to be like a crazy scratch person and stuff like that, but if you're in the mobile industry, it does not matter if you can scratch or not. All you need to be able to do is make a decent transition. And crowd reading is what makes you a better DJ than another DJ. And Marcel's right now is killing it.
Well guys, so they are still partying back there, but uh, I'm about to cut out of here. Uh, like I said, I'm not staying the whole night, so I'm gonna go ahead on and get on out of here. They still got like an hour and a half, two hours left of dancing. I'm tired, it's been a long day, honestly. So anyway guys, that's it, I'm out, I'm out. I'll sign off later. You know, a lot of times at these like venues that are kind of on a little bit of an off-road path, it makes it really nice that I got a light bar. So I can see exactly where I'm going to get out of here. You can see every last little thing. Look, I can see the whole road, no problem. No problem. Look at that, that's my light bar on, light bar off. Light bar on, light bar off. This is my brights, and that's my light bar. Yo, I hope you guys enjoyed today's video. I hope you guys enjoyed the little bit of educational tutorial on how to live stream weddings, or more importantly, how to record weddings and do it as an upsell. Leave down in the comment section down below, as always, what you guys thought of this video and what you guys have suggestions for future videos and stuff like that. What'd you guys think of the gig log? What'd you guys think? More gig logs coming because we are rolling on events here. Like events are rolling here every single weekend. It is awesome. So sorry for you guys that aren't back doing events yet uh, because of restrictions. But on that note, make sure you hit the subscribe button. Make sure you turn on post notifications so you can see all the new gig logs that are coming. Like always guys, my name is Deidre Webb. Keep them records spinning and I will see you guys next time. Peace.